Hey, Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to another Saving Your Disaster campaign. Now, this was sent in by my co host 12, and there's actually uh, only a few mistakes um, in the sense that this is something I would really drill down on, but this is actually a fairly good game. It's not the worst disaster I've ever seen. Now, he is going to lose this game, and... Um, Quite simply, it's down to two factors. He's behind on the space race, so his exoplanet expedition is going to be late, and um, the fact that Lautaro is ahead of him, right? That, that's pretty much all it boils down to, is he was a little bit slow. Um, the fact that he doesn't have the um, Mars colony accessed right now, that it's turn 250. Keep in mind, turn 250 is usually around the turn that I've, I've won the game. So you can see this guy's a little bit behind where he should be. And he's not making enough science to be able to get up here. He has done a good job in terms of settling his cities. They're relatively close together. They're settled on places that I would consider pretty good. Aquilia is maybe a questionable city, but I would probably have settled this as well. But yeah, he, he basically settled in the pattern that I would have. And I'm gonna basically just kind of go down through the mistakes he made this game. Uh, starting off uh, with a pretty simple one. He didn't go for flood barriers in a science game with a coastal sieve. Um, one of the big advantages and, and sort of strategies you use when you're going for a science game is to go for these industrial zones. We'll talk about this pretty low adjacency here in a little bit, but you go for these coal power plants in here and they produce a lot of pollution, which is a good thing for you because you have high tech. So you'll be able to build those flood barriers before they negatively affect your empire while everyone else in the world gets flooded and has a really bad time. So that's why we go for, that. that's sort of part of the reason we go for these coal power plants in the top half of this tech tree because you've been two technologies away from computers for the last probably 50 turns, give or take, depending on when you unlocked satellites. Um, yeah, you, you've just been, I, I don't know what exactly you've been doing. You're, you're, you're not doing enough beelining um, for sure. You should almost certainly, like, I don't know why you researched combined arms. I mean, I guess to get uranium to go for nukes, that could be getting nukes, saving up a ton of gold and nuking Lautaro could be a good way to prevent him from winning. It's an option. Don't know if it's going to work for you um, because as far as I can tell, you only have one source of uranium, but it's an option. It's an option to go for, but it is, it is a low percentage chance. Uh, he's also got a pretty bad government setup. I'm just going to go ahead and unlock this here. Your army is so small, you are not getting Getting much benefit from conscription. You should never have that plugged in and instead you should have craftsmen plugged in because you have a decent number of industrial zones and don't forget that you actually get double double this bonus if you build coal power plants everywhere because uh, your coal power plants actually doubles off of the doubling of this card. So if you have a plus five industrial zone and then you double it to plus ten your coal power plant will go from plus five production to plus 10 as well. So the card is actually giving you plus 10, even though if you have these UI mods, which should be linked in the description, um, will only show you plus five. So this, this is like a super important card to have plugged in. Another mistake you've made is you have drill manuals plugged in. It is super not necessary to have drill manuals plugged in because even though yes, you correctly identified that you're losing coal, but you incorrectly identified the solution. The solution for losing coal is to just go to the resources tab, look for someone who has a ton of coal, like Lautaro, and then offer to buy, you know, you know, a hundred, like, you know, a hundred coal off them for whatever they'll pay you. So like, you know, two, two coal, you, you could just buy those strategics. Typically you only want to use cards like drill manuals if you have A, a ton of coal mines and B, are in a war game where nobody likes you. If you're going for domination, that's when these kind of cards shine. Uh, rationalism probably isn't worth it for nine science. Nine science really isn't enough enough at this stage. Honestly, aesthetics is probably better for the three culture because your culture is really, really low. That's going to be something we talk about a little bit later. Your culture is far too weak this game, especially playing Rome where you get free monuments. Like your culture should be way better than this. Um, it's super just is not good enough to have, uh, you know, 80 culture at turn 250. Really bad, really not good. I don't know what you've been putting your production time into, but it's probably not the right things. So yeah, rationalism, probably a takeout. Honestly, Raj as 
well is something I would consider taking out. You're almost certainly better off with something like Visselbanken to combine with Trade Confederation on international trade routes, but you also have Trade Confederation plugged in and you aren't using all of your trade routes. You've only got two of five, so there's more mistakes. You definitely, if you're gonna be doing some sort of trading strategy, you wanna maximize how many trade routes you can get and how many of them are active. In terms of Raj, you would probably get more value out of something like um, Visselbanken, get alliances with your neighbors. Machiavellianism is super important. You have no spies. We'll talk about that a little bit later. This could be really great to get your spies out. Um, even Charismatic Leader is worth plugging in over Raj, in my opinion, because the influence points are really, really hard to get. You also don't have a diplomatic quarter, which is another problem we're going to talk about in a little bit. But yeah, definitely, I think I would reconsider this. I think, I think Natural Philosophy and Trade Confederation are reasonable choices that you've made here. But if we go back out here and we look at your cities, you have negative amenities in almost every single one of your cities. So that nine science you were getting from rationalism is, is, is just a negative, right? If you look at negative amenities, we're losing nine science from Ostia. Ostia alone is losing nine science. So you would have been far better off if you had plugged in something like liberalism to get you amenities um, or Republican legacy, which for some reason you don't have access to. I don't understand why you don't have access to Republican legacy. Uh, did you not build, did you not build a government plaza? Well, maybe you didn't. You should also totally always have public works plugged in in a science game. This is a much more reasonable government. I would definitely have um, Republican legacy in here instead of liberalism, but these plus seven amenities, it doesn't look like much, but it should in theory actually fix a lot of your amenity problems that you've got in a lot of your cities, or at the very least alleviate them to where it's not as big of a problem. The next problem I've identified, and we kind of touched on it there a minute ago, is you have just really, really low culture. You, you like, you know, if we go to empire mode, you've got like one, and you kind of seem to notice that you had really low culture because you went for theater squares. Um, but if you're, if you're going for theater squares, don't, in, in a science game, never go for archeolo, or, or, oh, you did, oh, sorry. Never go for art museums. Always go for the archeological museum. Always, 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 always go for the archeological museum. Um, it's a little bit early in the game to be working campus research grants you still have infrastructure to be building like realistically it's the atomic era and you're uh, you're in the modern era for for culture you should be you should be researching these tech you should already have your tier three government and you should be almost heading into the information area your culture is so far behind it's kind of insane um so that's definitely something you need to fix you need to get to work on, um, you, yeah, you know, nice, you got culture from plantations. Like you went for lots of culture this game, but you needed to just come up with like one or two cities, like maybe a Redium and Ostia, they just do like a couple of theater squares adjacent to each other. And then you put a, um, you put an entertainment complex between them. The entertainment complex t helps take care of your amenities. It boosts up your theater squares, gives you the extra culture. You go for um, you go for natural history. You get your archaeologists up. You dig up all the relics. You end up with a ton of extra culture. Where is the great work screen? Do you have no great works? Oh, you have no great works, dude. You've got you've got um you've got amphitheaters. Just go go buy some great works. Yeah, you could just be like, hey, how much for this? Thirteen gold per turn. That's a valuable deal. Hey, I've got this spare honey. So one honey and six gold per turn. Boom. I just increased your culture by two per turn for the rest of the game, and you could do that four times easily and that's an extra eight culture per turn that's almost 10 that's more than 10 percent more culture than you're making right now which would be huge um so so if you are going for theater squares and you went for them late make sure you're buying great works don't be trying to bank on these things coming up you gotta buy them that's why archaeologists are great because archaeologists are independent they can go out and just grab those antiquity sites but you also do a little search for antiquity sites to see what's near you and you got one two three four five six you get six on your continent i don't see a huge amount of antiquity sites it's probably pretty late a lot of people have picked them up there's a ton over here but you could probably support two to three two to three archaeological museums in this empire quite easily with the antiquity sites that are just within like easy reach so that would be something i would have considered is, is go for more more theater squares more early it also looks like you built your campuses in pretty low adjacency i think i think you had a couple of campuses flood over here which kind of relates back to your bad tech pathing earlier you should have definitely picked up flood barriers and then use this encampment to train military engineers to build those really really quickly a micro problem you've got here is you never ever ever do you want to hard build a shipyard a shipyard is a building that you buy with gold it is too important to wait more than 15 turns. Um, my rule of thumb is if a shipyard takes more than like 15 to 20-ish turns, that's when I'm thinking about buying it with gold. I would just never ever, 
ever would I consider building this hard unless it's like 10 to 12 turns. That's where I would be like, okay, instantly, boom, shipyard, it's going to increase the production of the city. You should have been making more money and then uh, buying that. 100% you should have been. Oh, another problem I noticed was your governor title usage. So you went for Magnus early to be able to train settlers with provision, which is fine. And I hopefully you've been moving him around and using him to chop because there's a city over here that you could do a ton of chopping in at some point this game and uh, have made a bunch of profit here. But you've also, you've also, heavily promoted Pingala, a curator here is not actually doing anything for you. So this is just a waste. Um, the scientific Pingala thing is you go connoisseur in order to unlock the next governor title quicker through the civic tree. Then you go for researcher, then grants, and then you sit on this for a while. You Sometimes you skip grants depending on the strategy that you're going for. But generally, if I'm going for some sort of campus or a ton of uh, economic districts in my capital, I would go for grants for the extra great people points because great people points are quite valuable. And then you wait until you build your spaceport and then you grab space initiative when you start building things. Otherwise, it feels like you just have very, very few governor titles. Yeah, it just feels like you really just don't have enough of them. Especially if you're playing some sort of tall game here where you don't have a lot of cities, you 100% should have gone for audience chamber here for the plus two amenities and plus four housing in cities with governors. This is just basically free yields that you're not getting. And it also gives you a governor title so you could plug that into another one of these cities. A ton of your cities are housing locked. You're missing out on a huge amount of value by not building this. Not building your government buildings is screwing you in terms of your governor titles. And then also in terms of the buffs that you could pick up from these. Not only could you be getting the Republican legacy policy card, which would give you plus one housing and amenities in every city with a district, which is massive. You're also missing out on things like the intelligence agency, which is like the go-to thing for a science victory. You can go ahead and spy on the enemy who's doing better than you and steal all of his science. You can also pillage his spaceport, slow down his space victory. Yeah, this is just 100% the mistake. You're missing out on two governor titles, a ton of housing, a ton of amenities, and a free spy, and better spies, and you're missing out on the ability to be using your one tool, your one tool that you have in, in what was described as a pacifist science game to actually slow the enemy down, which is spies. You super, super hardcore need to be building these spies and then um, working on the intelligence agency. Um, your capital, since it has Pingala, should 100% have a theater square in it somewhere. It doesn't matter where, really, as long as you get a reasonable adjacency. This spaceport location is god-awful. Where it should be, is adjacent to a diplomatic quarter in your capital. This is the way to do it because the diplomatic quarter makes spies less effective on adjacent districts. So you put this here. You are correctly uh, defensively counter spying on this, which I appreciate. So that's something you are doing very well, but you should 100% have a diplomatic quarter here and then the spaceport here or some other configuration like this and uh, take advantage of, of the extra spy defense that a diplomatic quarter gives you. Then, then generally it's kind of just like normal issues mistakes that players make. You've got a ton of tiles that you're working at and aren't improved. If I take Ostia as an example, these fishing boats aren't improved. Like, I don't know what's going on with that. You're just literally missing out on one food and like two gold in here uh, per tile, which would be massive. It also give you a total of extra housing. Um, this aluminum was unlocked pretty recently, so I can understand why that's not improved. You're working campus research grants when you've got a pillaged harbor. You could be building traders in here. There's so many more things that you could be building in here that would be better, unless you're really trying to get, you know, Carl Sagan, which I appreciate your, you know, you, you have, you have jungle lumber mill tech, which is mercantilism. You should totally, totally have lumber mills on at least a couple of these tiles or even have chopped them. Like there could be a mine here. Let's see more, uh, not really too many unimproved tiles in here, except for the oil. But you know, this fish should be improved. A, a look at the amount of tiles in here that are unimproved. Now maybe some sort of disaster hit. Yep. Tiles in here should absolutely be improved. You, sh I don't know why you're building a second spaceport. No need to build a second spaceport almost ever when you're going for a science victory. This would have been better off being spies and archeologists, traders, builders, anything like that, that helps your empire wide infrastructure would have been huge. Generally, your district adjacency is quite low, which worries me. Most of your campuses are at least three. You want to hit that up to four. If you can, three is good, four is ideal. Your industrial zone adjacency is quite low. I would consider a three like the bare minimum for an industrial zone and I would only really start considering industrial zones at like four to six adjacency. That's what I would want to be putting them down. So definitely these are on the weaker end of industrial zones. They're still good. They're just not 
great um, because industrial zones come quite late into the game so they have to produce a lot of production to actually make building them viable. Um, another problem I've identified, your income is quite low. You are not trading with the AI. You can just sell them open borders and pick up two to three gold per AI in the entire game. And that would represent, you know, somewhere between 10 and 20 extra gold per turn, which is massive for you. That's 50% of your current surplus that you're missing out on because you're just failing to do any diplomacy. And then on top of that, you're also failing to use your luxury resources as a bargaining chip. For example, in trade deals for things like great works. Again, we could go into Eleanor, we could talk to Eleanor and say, hey, I wanna buy your great work. She already has that, so, you know. Depending on what you sell her, um, you might get different deals and stuff like that. But you could you could totally be selling. You could totally be selling your 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 strategics. You could be selling your luxuries, all that sort of stuff, and trade deals with the AI. In fact, the only trade deal that I identified here that you had done was like gold. I'm not sure how you got that twenty three gold per turn, and the five gold from Arabia. Maybe there was like some sort of emergency that gave you you know, a target of gold or something. I, I don't know what happened there, but yeah, your trading, your trading game is weak at the moment. But the really nice thing is this person actually sent me in a second version of this save file where it's quite a bit earlier into the game. And I'm going to hopefully go back now in time and see if I can actually save this game. Because I think this is a loss from here. You're just a little bit too far behind. Realistically, nobody should ever beat you to Mars Colony. That's, that's reality. If you're playing correctly, you should be able to get to this. And I think there might be enough time if we go back to, you know, back in time to actually save this game. So this here is the earlier save file and things are not a huge amount better here, but at the very least things aren't so bad because we have plenty of time to try to correct the mistakes. It looks like you've been hit pretty bad with a, um, with a tornado here or something. You got a ton of pillaged stuff. A couple of volcanoes have been ruining your day. You are working on the Ruhr Valley, which is cool because you correctly identified some good wonders, which is something I actually failed to talk about is you, you, you didn't build a whole lot of wonders. Like mausoleum is still available, dude. You could get mausoleum right here in Palmyra. Why are you building this campus? This campus is, is, is gonna float away. You should 100% have been building the uh, the mausoleum in here, especially because you have you have choppable resources and this could be the city that, you know, takes advantage of that. You, you, you do a lot of stuff with that. This city also, um, you should, if you're building a harbor, you need to build the lighthouse essentially immediately after. I get that you want science, but most of the value of a, of a harbor is in the lighthouse. You need those lighthouses. So in this city, like, Look at it, it's already housing cap. You you need that lighthouse. I would even go as far as to say that purchasing the lighthouse and then the shipyard would make the city so much better. But I don't know if you have the gold for that. You're just you're just struggling for gold right now. You know what? You you do have the money. I'm gonna purchase a lighthouse in here. We'll slowly work on a library. That's given this city an extra three houses to work with, which is massive, and it also has a ton more food. Uh, and we'll purchase the shipyard in here in the not too distant future. But over here in Palmyra, you should absolutely, absolutely be building the mausoleum. You, you could be working a ton of really, really nice coastal tiles in here. Is there somewhere else with better production that I could get it? Not really. I mean, a little bit. Kume. Kume could build it in 19 turns, drop a theater square right there, get a good theater square. Yeah, you know what? I think I think I am going to build it. I'm going to build it in Kume, although Kume doesn't have the chops. So yeah, you know what? I'm going to cancel the campus over here place the mausoleum, reassess our tech path. We have chemistry, we can work on rocketry and then immediately, immediately go for flood barriers. That's the sort of tech path we want to be going here. I also failed to talk about um, some of the things you want to do. Like for example, your your capital city was housing capped in the previous example. So sometimes it's work just to fill out the uh, campus district. That's, that's something you absolutely should be considering in your cities because if you think about it, what, what do these tiles give you when you're housing capped? They give your food, which is more population, but your housing cap, so you're not getting that as fast, so you may as well work these science districts. These are important in order to maximize your science, particularly in a game where you don't have a lot of population. I don't know why you're building a frigate down here. A uh, frigate's not going to do anything for you. You should absolutely be working on repairing these things. It looks like you kind of had, yeah, you had a bit of a disaster roll through, which is fair enough, but we need, we need to get all these districts repaired. Now, in Kume, we have completed the lighthouse. We could work on the research lab. That is worth 16 science, because you actually have done a good job, if I remember correctly, you know, recruiting good, great scientists like Albert Einstein, which means your science is really, really good. And you've also been getting suzerainty of these city-states, which is also really, really good. So 
we will prioritize the research lab wherever it makes sense and then purchase shipyards where it makes sense also. If we take a look at your government in this position, natural philosophy is great. I don't know why you still have colonization plugged in. This is insane. This should not be plugged in this deep into the game. Um, that's just that's just objectively a mistake. Conscription as well. You've probably had access to craftsmen for a very very long time. When do you unlock your next civic next turn? So we're gonna we're gonna change this around next turn. We gotta we gotta fix some of your mistakes. Also, you're playing Rome. Build your bats. Bats are so good. They provide you with an extra amenity. Um, they prevent food loss. All that sort of stuff and they're half price like this is just you know this is a hundred production for a, a, an amenity in this city and a little bit of extra housing like you should absolutely do that in this city and it's probably going to be what we need to do um i need to identify somewhere oh man why are you building sewers i mean i guess you do need the housing and it would be nice to boost democracy but that that's like super not your priority um really really isn't you are using your you do have a spy and you are using him offensively which is good so make sure you're gaining sources stealing gold and that'll help a lot we have civil engineering now so we can come in here and we can retool this government charismatic leader just isn't worth it at this stage it is a good card to plug in but not right now absolutely get rid of colonization absolutely plug in public works Absolutely plug in craftsmen. And 100% invention is a great plug in here. You have a pretty reasonable number of workshops. So this is just a ton of great people points for a type of great person that can be super valuable for you. Then in terms of everything else we want to plug in, I think we just plug in urban planning for nine production because that's like about on par with craftsmen. It's not a huge amount of production, but we can replace this later with something like trade confederation, which will help our culture. Now that we have civil engineering, we need to pick our next path. I think we definitely want to go for natural history here, to be able to pick up those extra envoys as well as the ability to, um, to get those archeologists. We can 11 turn a research lab on Pudioli, so that's what we'll do. Oh, look at this industrial zone. A plus one industrial zone is super never, almost never worth building. Now that iron is pillaged right now, so it should technically be better, but still, uh, you want to be getting at least three. Three, three is where I would only start considering them. Um, this industrial zone would have been better placed, honestly, over here on the deer or something like that. Also, don't improve caps. This is a mistake. Harvest the deer and then put a lumber mill on this tile. We have another governor charge. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to appoint Liang. I'm going to appoint Liang in Pudioli, like so. Use her to build builders in here once we finish that research lab. And then I'm gonna put Magnus in Ostia and we'll move builders over here and do a bunch of chopping stuff to try and get this city up and running better. Once you unlock research labs, they should be your number one priority everywhere that you can build them, but don't rush towards them in cities that can't. Don't worry about it. Now, in terms of diplomacy, we're gonna to talk to Victoria. We're gonna get a resident embassy and we're gonna look for a research alliance. They'll even pay me 200 gold flat for this alliance. That's just 200 gold I made off the back of a trade route there or, or a trade deal there, which allows me to buy a shipyard in Aquilia and basically massively increase the city's production up to 16. We essentially doubled the productivity of this city with a, like, with a pair of gold purchases. Ada Lovelace is probably a great person that I would consider skipping. Plus one thing, the computer's technology. We already have the computer's technology. Yeah, I, I would skip Ada Lovelace. So I'm gonna pass on her. I'll let someone else pick her up and then we can get a role on a better grade engineer. So because we made friends with England, we can no longer spy on them, which you know is, is a small mistake on my part, but that's not honestly that bad of a deal because we're now gonna get really, really good trade routes with England. I probably should have made a scientific alliance with France instead, but I figured England was a good choice because they're more likely to declare war on me. The terrain is much more open over here and they're a good bit ahead of us in terms of technology. So this is a much more useful uh, great engineer, Gustav Eiffel. So I'm gonna go ahead and recruit him and I'm actually gonna teleport him over to the mausoleum because he can basically finish the mausoleum on his own and then he gets the builder sort of engineer charge back instantly. So we still have two charges on Gustav Eiffel to spend on another. Um, another wonder that we might want. Out of all the wonders that are available right now, I would probably take the Great Lighthouse? I, I, I'm trying to think of what I would actually use a charge on. What do we have to unlock in terms of wonders? Not a lot, really. Not a whole lot. There, there aren't many wonders left in the tech tree that haven't been claimed. And uh, same sort of deal in the culture tree. Maybe we'll be able to save him to get Broadway or something and if, if Broadway hasn't been taken. When you're, uh, when, you're, when you're thinking about what to do in a city, always prioritize repairs. Repairs are the most efficient way to get value back. All right, we'll pop Gustav Eiffel in here. A Boom, bus. instantly got the mausoleum. And now we have a science powerhouse city except it works off of the coastline. So our next big purchase in here is definitely gonna be a shipyard. We're gonna slap a shipyard in Palmyra to take huge advantage 
of the production from that. Another mistake you're making is you're not actually placing your districts and you also fail to identify here that if you were to put another farm here you'd have a farm triangle and get way more value from these farms. So yeah builders, traders, you just need more of those. Ruhr Valley is finished, excellent. This was a really really good decision on your part to get the Ruhr Valley because now the production in the capital is insane. All production is now multiplied, so growth is less valuable. So what I would do is whenever you get the Ruhr Valley in a city, pretty much unlock every tile in the city, then max out production, lock in every high production tile that you can find, and then make sure the city is still growing at a reasonable rate by locking in a few farms. Like I'm gonna lock in this farm triangle right here. Uh, I could even steal the honey from over here, definitely want this to be my spaceport city so I want to be thinking about what tiles can I steal and improve from other cities to make this city even better like this mine right here sure it makes Pudioli weaker but it makes my capital way better um, we're sitting on a literal boatload of production here I don't know why you didn't pick these up it's only a few turns like Diplo quarter two turns for Diplo quarter four turns for a uh, theater square commercial hub you're missing a commercial hub there's so many good districts that you're just straight up missing so let's get the government plaza repaired let's place the Diplo quarter on that farm that we're no longer using and we'll get our government buildings going next Gustav Eiffel he can just rest now he's done his job he's already got his value he got us the mausoleum which turns this city into a culture and scientific powerhouse so we're gonna get massive value from there we should also think about making friends with Vilnius to get a little bit more value out of our culture buildings. Working on the audience chamber now to get those amenities and housing. Oof, catastrophic eruption over here. That's painful because I had just repaired this iron mine. Um, that really sucks. It looks like you got screwed by this quite a few times in this game. These, these eruptions are killer. But look now, thanks to this city being highly productive, we can get the university in just 15 turns. I am gonna go ahead and prioritize traders in this city because it's not as important that I build this city up compared to others. Boom, we've got colonialism now, so fishing boats give plus one production. So we should absolutely be prioritizing getting these fishing boats online everywhere we can because they're now a production tile. Audience chamber finished. Let's grab the intelligence agency because we want the extra spy and the stronger spy effect. I'm even prioritizing this over the research lab and this is a literal god research lab i just need those extra governor titles so i can pick up things like reina when you get reina what you want to do is look for the highest adjacency harbor you have in your empire and then slap her in that city so ostia would actually be a good place but i have magnus there for now so instead i'm going to put her in aquilia the reason you do that is because with one extra governor title she can double the adjacency bonus from commercial hubs and harbors and then get tax collector which does mean that the extra production you get from the shipyard is also doubled in the same vein of the coal power plant card and interaction. I can get the research lab on Iridium but I'm opting for a builder because I have at least two tiles that I could massively improve with builder charges. A mine here and a chop and a mine here would be a great combo. But remember builders are one of your best investments in the entire game. They will literally pay off for generations. Campus complete in Palmyra. What we'll do in here is instead of purchasing the shipyard I'm actually going to I'm considering chopping it because I can get 117 production which is about half the shipyard which means I would build it in nine turns. On the other hand, I could instantly chop out a library in here for five extra science, but the shipyard has a ton of value and would make these like coastal tiles even more workable. So I think I'm gonna harvest for the shipyard and bring that down to 11 turns, which is a reasonable amount of time to spend on a shipyard. We have the intelligence agency in Rome. Let's grab the Diplo quarter. Governor title wise, we're gonna plug in Harbor Master into Reina now that we have that extra governor title. We can actually change our government and I'm going to get rid of urban planning now because the harbor adjacency card, we never unlocked the harbor adjacency card. Never mind, I totally forgot. A lot of people forget about this card. If you're building harbors and shipyards, get this card. It is literally the best coastal card in the entire game. You, you have to be picking up naval infrastructure because how it works is, let's say you have a five adjacency shipyard over here. It doubles that to 10. And then the shipyard in this city is worth 10 production. It's massive for actually getting production in your coastal cities. And then if you have it in a city with Reina, with the doubles, the adjacency thing again, they actually stack. So this would become plus four and then it would turn into plus eight. And then with Reina, it would turn into a plus 16 production or is it plus 12? It's plus 12 or 16. Um, I can't remember exactly. It, it, just, it just kind of all synergizes really nicely. And it's something you should absolutely be doing in your games. Any game you're building a shipyard, this is what you need to do. You should 100% have a harbor in Ravenna. It should be the next thing that you build. Yes, you have a commercial hub, that's fine. I would have opted for a harbor in here and not a commercial hub, 
Where did you even build that commercial hub? Oh, I guess here's fine. I would have maybe put something else here, but that's fine. Boom, it's turn 208 and my science is already 252 compared to, I think you were like turn 255 and you're at 270 science. So this is like, I feel like I'm, I'm doing quite a bit better. The city needs builders. So that's what we're gonna prioritize. And I also need amenities. Um, and what I'm gonna do in order to get those is start trading. So we'll talk to England about any amenities they have surplus. It doesn't look like they do, but they will buy my, uh, my honey for 10 gold per turn, which is great because that's frees me up money to go trade for great works. We have room for four great works of writing, so I would like to acquire four great works of writing from Eleanor. She's demanding 34 gold per turn, which is a lot, but I can use honey to offset that as well as coal, although I'm losing coal if I remember correctly. I can offer her open borders, look for these two, and she'll make me pay 34 gold per turn. Man, that's a steep price. We could use Diplo favor instead. Yeah, that brings that down to a reasonable 12 gold per turn, plus these other things for uh, two great works of riding. I think that's a more reasonable price. I'd like to buy two more if I could. These ones are a little bit cheaper, and she'll make me pay another 10 gold per turn for these these two great works of writing. That's an extra, that's an extra, um, that's an extra 10, 10 culture per turn. That, that's huge. Like we're, we're just, we're just making more culture. I don't know why they're worth more in here. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna question why these ones are giving me six. I just, I, I don't get it. Um, but I'm getting six in here, which is cool. All right, Diplo Quarter finished. And the reason why we're going Diplo Quarter first instead of Research Lab is because if you look at this consulate, it's worth six science. Look at the chancery, it's worth nine. Now, the, Research Lab itself is probably worth more right now, so I'm gonna prioritize that. But then we wanna get the Consulate and Chancery because these are also worth science as well as influence points. Influence points are literally the most difficult resource to get in the entire game. We're getting five of them per turn. If we built the Consulate, we would be getting seven of them per turn. That is a 40% increase. Then if we got the Chancery, we would be getting 10 per turn. So building these two buildings would literally double the rate at which we get passive envoys. It would, instead of being, um, one or, or two envoys every 30 turns, we would be getting two envoys every 15 turns, which is massive. Time to start setting up our trade routes. Um, two questions we have to ask is prioritizing gold and then looking for the highest science trade route. And we also wanna be trading with our allies. And we also wanna pick the right city to trade from. And because we're looking for science, we wanna be trading from the city of Pengala because he'll multiply all science gains in here by 15% because he's Pengala and he's awesome. We have sitting on three envoys. I'm gonna take suzerainty of Bologna. Boom, I'm now suzerain of them, which is helpful. It gives me a little bit more vision. It actually tells me about Saladin, so I can consider now uh, spying on him, stealing his gold, all that sort of stuff. Pop down a farm in Palmyra, making these three tiles way more workable in terms of their output, because now the city will be producing. I will lock in the lumber mill tiles, because they're our best production. And then I'll lock in the reef tiles. And then I'll lock in the fishing tiles and then I'll lock in this. This city just needs to grow before I can start working these farms, which seems like an oxymoron, but um, you know, your mom's an oxymoron, got him. I'm actually gonna prioritize production in here. This city just needs to get that, get that um, shipyard up, up faster. We should totally also, before you get craftsmen, you wanna have that um, veterancy card plugged in right here because that'll let you build up your harbors quicker, which really, really helps. All right, we got our builder in our redium. We should definitely start working on the research lab. Science is king after all. We're going to prioritize trading with England because we're looking for gold and then science. Boom, naval tradition, quite a, quite a bit happens this turn. We did get a golden age, which is fantastic. Or we got a normal age rather. Um, and we're gonna plug in heartbeat of steam because this is just a great way to get error score in this era. And I, I, I wanna illustrate this, right? Look at this, look at this trade tile, right? Two food, three production, or this crab's tile rather. Two food, three production, or three gold, one science, one faith, one culture. If I improve this now, it's three food, one production, five gold, and then one of each of those. It's just a better tile, and then you could be working it, and you could do the same thing with all of these. It's just always, 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 always improve your fishing tiles. They're so good improved. They give you housing, they give you food, they give you gold. All right, let's, let's retool our government here. We're gonna get rid of urban planning, and instead we are going to plug in naval infrastructure that's worth 15 gold and that same amount in production if we have shipyards. It's gonna really help recover our economy because we spent a lot of our money buying things from other people. I don't know how much value there is in building a factory and coal plant in here compared to building a harbor um, or even just building infrastructure like traders. We just need traders and builders, especially Ravenna. Look at Ravenna. It is working so many bad tiles. Builders, it is. We probably want two builders in here, but I'm actually going to build some of my builders from Pudioli because I have Liang plugged in there and they're just slightly more efficient. So instead I'll work on traders and maybe a harbor in here, which I think is a good spread. 
We've got random like rainforest here. We could either put a lumber mill on this and get plus two production, or we could harvest it, force the city to grow to another pop, finish our builder faster, pop down another mine, because remember, we're getting one of our build charges for free from Liang. So chopping is, the first chop is free on your builders in Pudioli, and then put down a mine here instead and just, you know, use insane amounts of production in the city to do fun things. I don't really care too much about the World Congress. So I'm just gonna put like one vote in random stuff. It's not a lot of gold, to steal from here, but it is a good way to safely level up your spies is to steal gold. So that's what we're going to prioritize doing. Like look at Iridium. We could harvest this, boom, finish our research lab five turns sooner and then put a mine here and the city is just better. This should be a farm or a lumber mill as well. Cause this like, this is just a waste of, of, of builder charges to build on this configuration. You want your farms to either be on a resource or in a triangle. It looks like you were trading with city states. Um, maybe you had a mission to get envoys with them, but you should 100% be trading with players. Like look how much more I'm getting from trading with England rather than I'm getting from trading with these city states. It, it doesn't look like you have like elves and Minerva or anything like that to get the extra envoys from trading with them. So it, it just honestly seems like a waste. Now this is something I want to take a moment to talk about. The second you finish your research lab in a city, you need to go to that city and think about if you want to work the specialist slots inside the district. Because previously we were getting a total of four science from maxing out this thing. Now we can get nine science from it. Also, I'm up to 352 science per turn, by the way, on turn 214 in comparison to, I think you were 270 at turn 255. So I'm like way ahead of you scientifically already. Um, at least, at least I don't know how the intervening turns went. I would even consider shunting out the guys from this industrial zone like this by prioritizing science and deprioritizing production down to nothing. Um, or you could just do this manually. You can prioritize both then manually prioritize this itself while locking in. You generally, you want to have enough food to grow. So this could be a bit problematic at this kind of a situation. So I may lock in that four food tile there to uh, to just get that little bit of extra value. Remember a, a tile that's improved that you're not working is just a waste of a builder charge. Like you had two farms here that you had improved that you weren't working. You've got a mine over here that you could have improved. It's just a, a lot of small mistakes. Now I'm considering in the capital something along the lines of a entertainment complex actually because if I can get extra amenities in here I can grow this city more off the back of farms and then um, just be in a better position to actually build my spaceport but I also need to get this consulate and chancery online so I think I'm gonna go entertainment complex first one big mistake oh by the way this is a massive mistake that players make is the second they unlock the spaceport they start building it it's not necessary most of your time with the spaceport is gonna be spent waiting until you get to this end of the tech tree you, this, you don't have to build a spaceport the second you get it. You can place it, but you don't have to actually launch the Earth satellite or the moon landing until you're probably close to getting Mars colony, like 20 turns away. That's when you should start doing it. Uh, you, you don't have to start your spaceport instantly. You have time to go for things like your consulate, your chancery, your space, uh, and, and you know, entertainment complexes. Every workshop is actually worth three great engineer points. So that's a lot of value here in Caesar Augusta, but also tiles are just unimproved here. So I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need even more builders at a Pudioli. Let's be real, I'm gonna need at least two more. Trade routes, again, prioritize your allies. And that that's for a very particular reason, because we're getting three signs from every trade route with them. If we plug in now the trade confederation card we'd be getting that two science and two culture or, or, or five science five culture from that which is huge we are going to rework our government slightly here in a little bit although we do have kind of really optimal cards plugged in until democracy there might be some fiddling about that we can do we got our lighthouse in ostia we have the money now to purchase the shipyard and boom, this city just has more production. Like it just, it just has more production now because of the shipyard. I'm getting 10 from that shipyard and then another plus one from each of these tiles. That's 12 production of the city, which will naturally lead to us getting the research lab faster. Now that we have the shipyard in Palmyra, we'll be able to completely steam through these uh, campus buildings. We're starting to get builders into position in Ostia right now. I think my priority is to get these fishing boat tiles online. And then I've got another building coming in, builder coming in who will do a bit of chopping here to uh, rip up some of this terrain. I'm going to prioritize chopping on hills that have jungle and then replacing them with mines and then looking for farm triangles like it builds like right here and then any other non-hill non-farm triangleable lumber um, jungle I'll put lumber mills on instead. It's sort of a very very basic procedure that I go through when I'm deciding about how to improve a city with jungle is like chop the hills then chop the farm triangles and then lumber mill everything else. Boom, we've got rocketry now on turn 217 and we have natural history. So there's a couple of important milestones here. We can place 
our spaceport, but we don't have to build it right now, right? We've got we've got other things we can do in the meantime to try to boost up our science, boost up our production, all that sort of stuff. Now that we're starting to think about military engineers and flood barriers, because the flooding is starting to happen, I'm going to start uh, move away from producing builders in here and move towards getting my armory up for military engineers. Boom, farm triangle. These tiles are just better. The city will grow faster. You can justify working your science districts with this farm triangle. I could literally lock in these three mines, one or two farms, and then a couple of these slots here. First chop, boop, instantly boost the city up to uh, seven population. I won't chop again here until the city hits seven population because you want to kind of space your chops out turn by turn if you're going to get overflow because if I chopped again, I would only be able to boost it up to eight. But if I do a double chop, I'll be able to get this all the way up to nine population really quickly with the food from jungles. All right, we're up to 400 science per turn. Iridium has finished its research lab. I need to make a decision in this city about whether or not I work the campus district to get that extra nine science per turn, which would bring the city up to about 55 science per turn. Or do I instead go for something like the Archaeological Museum and see if we can get out things? This city should also absolutely just have a harbor anywhere. For the trade route, all that sort of stuff. I'm going to get the Archaeological Museum first because that represents a lot of culture. We're also working on conservation so we can put lumber mills on these sorts of tiles that can't be farm triangle. There's really, really good production tiles that you should be prioritizing. All right, flooding is happening super fast this game. I don't know why that's happening so fast. It looks like Lautaro has just gone insane with his, uh, his flooding ability. We're only going to barely, barely get computers in time. Um, it's actually going to be very close to the wire to whether or not we actually can get these flood barriers up. Buy leveled up, prioritize siphon funds, uh, breaking spaceports and stealing techs. Boom, another chop here, up to nine population. City's production is starting to skyrocket. It can place more districts if we wanted. All right, we got seaports, which are another great source of gold in a coastal game because they give you plus two gold on every tile in the, uh, on every coastal tile in the city. 12 turns for the space, uh, the shipyard in Kume. Got a couple of unimproved coastal tiles in here too. Um, do I go for the bath? It would be nice for the amenity. Let's just hard build that shipyard for the six production. Boom, workshop done. More great engineer points secured. We should be able to get Robert Goddard without any trouble. We are burning through our coal very quickly. So that's something that we have to be a little bit concerned about. But uh, Victoria and Saladin are, are sitting on like a mountain of, of, uh, of coal. One trick you can do with strategic resources. It really, really sucks. I'm not going to lie. But see how I want to buy like a whole bunch of coal and she's charging me a hundred and something. If I just buy it one at a time, she'll only charge me 14 gold per purchase. It is a huge pain in your tits, like to just sit here and click it over and over again. But if you're trying to be optimal and you want to beat the AI, this is what it costs. Because this way, right, um, it only costs me about one, like about 30 gold or 28 gold for two pieces of coal. And I can kind of fill up my coffers here by doing this. So again, with deer tiles that are like this, don't. Don't build camps on them. Camps suck. Unless you have uh, Temple of Artemis. Always harvest the deer. Boom. Instantly finish the armory. Pop a lumber mill on that and you've just got a better tile, a higher production tile. So you have a bit of time before these campuses flood and those are the most important things for me to preserve. I don't care so much about these tiles here, but I need to preserve these campuses with flood barriers. So that's why I'm prioritizing it so much. Ah, uh, one cool little thing that a lot of people don't know, right? I want to put a theater square on this tile. So I could just place it there and crush that forest or I could chop the forest first when the city's building nothing and then I can just build it in three less turns. And now I just have a theater square in one turn and you know, it would have been four turns had I missed out on that other chop. I think someone's stealing my gold because my gold isn't going up nearly as fast as I need it to. That's a nine turn on this flood barrier. Um, I care less about this flood barrier. Now, one thing I'm going to do here is actually swap this niter tile away from Palmyra. I want as few of the floatable tiles in a selected city because the price of your flood barriers when you click it is based on how many floatable tiles, if I recall correctly. Like this one only had one floodable tile and it cost me 320. This city has two floodable tiles, I think it is. Let me see here. Yeah, I think it's two floodable tiles. So that's going to cost me like 640 production. I need to immediately start that. I need I need a lot of gold right now because I need these military engineers to be up immediately because I have literally five turns to get over here. And, and get these things up to save my uh, save my 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 campuses here. So this is a huge priority right now. This is like DEFCON 1. I need as much gold as I can get. I'm just going to go ahead and start trading away anything I can get for raw gold. She's willing to give me 34 gold per turn. You basically multiply that by 20. So she's probably going to give me in the region of 600-ish gold. I'll be able to purchase two military engineers. One this turn and then one maybe in a couple of like uh, next turn when I do a bit more trading away of certain things. 
Right, computers is unlocked. We're gonna go for moon landing into nanotechnology. We're just gonna straight beeline, grab the arena because we're no longer uh, no longer want to be suffering the negative amenities here. Four turns until Flood Two is gone. This is an emergency. I'm only losing two crappy tiles. I'm okay with losing that, but I cannot lose these campuses. So I'm gonna build another military engineer and then purchase another. This is like again, we're at DefCon One in terms of uh, military engineers. I'm even gonna grab some productive tiles from nearby, things that I can chop, things that I can work, uh, just to try and get this even faster. I got it down to 15 turns, so I might be able to pull it off. Look how much better these turtle tiles are when you get the shipyard and all the upgrades and stuff. They're just they're just better. The city is just way better than it was in your version of the game. Uh, like 20, 30 turns before. Oh my god, she's willing to give me a great work. Hell yeah, thank you. Always, always, always take free great works. Hell yes. We've got five, five great works now just churning out culture for us. We're up to 90 culture per turn. Not amazing. Again, not amazing. I think now is the time to start the spaceport. We built an arena. I don't know if the zoo is worth it. We have positive amenities. We're not suffering a negative. Maybe we'll consider the zoo if we go back into negative amenities. But I'm going to come in here. I'm going to rework the city. Tell it to deprioritize science. I'm solely, 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 solely prioritize production. And we're going to take every single productive tile that we can find from uh, from different cities and see if we can also improve them. The second you get your archaeological museum, instantly go for your archaeologist. I don't care what the city is doing. These things are worth it. They are so damn good, especially if you can get Mary Leakey. If I remember correctly, Mary Leakey can give you 350 uh, science from your artifacts. Over a thousand science from a single great person. Better for a tourism game. I forgot. I thought she was like the plus science from great works. I don't remember where that one comes from. My memory has been a bit leaky at the moment. Ha ha ha. Chop. Boom. Three turns off of that. Engineers are hitting the coastline. First engineer arrives in Palmyra. Immediately use a, a charge to finish that a little bit quicker. Next one's going to run over to Aquilia. I ran out of English cities to trade with, so I have a scouting knight down here to try and find more. Time to recruit more spies. We know once we finish the uh, spaceport, we're going to be see be able to see our biggest opponent. So we want to have those um, those things ready. Uh, and, and waiting, right? We want to be able to, uh, to to drop those spies on them the second we unlock the ability to see them. So we want to get those spies recruited nice and early. It'll add, like It's just a good idea to always build to your limit of spies because the second you see your greatest opponent when you launch the Earth mission, you can start sabotaging him with spies. Second charge in, kaboom. One more charge into the city, kaboom. Flood barrier is done. We'll get that engineer over here. Quilly is slightly lower priority, although still really, really high priority. We have five turns to do it. We should be able to do two charges in each of these and, and reach them in time. Might be a close thing. I don't know. I think, I think we'll be able to manage it. Protect our most important tiles. Spy is now level two and we have the option for disrupt rocketry. Gold stealing man. It's a great way to level your dudes up. Refresh uh, research alliance with England. See how much gold she'll give me. Somewhere between 300 and 400. Somewhere between 350 and 400. And a, a great way to do the trade deal thing is to just ping pong up to the limit that they'll give you um, and then just go back down by half and like try to find the, the point where they'll give you enough. And then once you hit that break point, bring it up or down by one or two gold. Because that, that's 335 gold that we just didn't have by trading, right? And now we have it and, and it's it's available to us. Boom. Flood barrier done in Palmyra. We have officially defended that city's uh, coastline and Aquilia is also going to be very easily defended by us. Uh, Ravenna should also be a fairly trivial defense. And now, now we can build to our heart's content in here. We can just do whatever we feel like. We can just build the things, get some extra science, all that jazz. At long last, we have discovered a route to England's capital of London. That's worth 13 gold per turn and two science. Boom, let's get that trade route going. Final spy steal over here to get this guy leveled up to level three, and then he'll be super effective against Lautaro, who I have kind of prior knowledge who my main enemy is gonna be this game, but he, you could slot in Lautaro for whoever your main enemy is gonna be in any particular game. Oh, nice, we managed to uh, sabotage the industrial zone in Cairo, which got this guy a level up as well. Uh, surveillance is amazing. Okay, once you have surveillance, you could just bring this guy home home and plant them in your spaceport city. If you get anything like this, this is just so incredible because now I can put him in the diplomatic quarter and he will defend this spaceport as if he was on it and he'll defend this spaceport as if he was one level higher. It's ridiculously good. And then I can use another spy directly on the spaceport so we have a double spy cover. We now have satellites so we have access to the moon landing. And again, we don't have to complete this immediately because we don't have exoplanet and we don't have Mars colony. 
So we have time. We have time to screw around before we rush for it. We also got Robert Goddard. That's amazing. Boom, 20% production towards space race projects. And don't forget, because we got the mausoleum, we get to use this guy twice. He has two charges. So now we have a 40% production boost towards our space race projects, which means we have even more time to screw around if we want. Boom, all of our flood barriers are built and we have defended every single floodable tile in our entire empire. Zero flooding loss, no campuses, always, 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 right? If you are in a coastal game and you have any sort of thing that you care about on the coastline, the second you get to rocketry, you immediately go to computers in a science game. You have to get those flood barriers out because the flooding happens really quickly after people get their research labs online. Um, the amount of CO2 being pumped into the atmosphere now by me and other players is ridiculous. So you have to get to that point. Mostly I've just been prioritizing getting research labs after defending these cities. 10 turns until our spaceport is up and uh, generally just making sure I have enough builders out improving my tiles. Look how much better my tiles are. I'm working on stuff in here. Uh, I've improved all these volcano tiles. This volcano actually went inactive. I don't know if it went inactive in your game, but um, yeah, seems to be going well. I'm working on um, archaeologists for culture. Culture is still very, very weak. Better than it was in your game though. I will give <laughs> I will give myself that much credit. My, my culture sucks right now, but at least it's better than what I was uh, I was given. Boom, another archeological museum complete. Broadcast centers, probably not worth your time. Archeologist, super worth your time. We're out of coal again, so we'll need to trade for it. I've gotten lazy and now I'm buying seven coal at a time because it's just, it's too much. It's too much clicking. It's, it's hard to keep that up for very long, but if you, if you can do it, you'll be in a great, a great spot. I'm, I'm more than happy to give up a little bit of my gold return. <laughs> to save some clicking. Sea level has risen and this tile flooded. All I have to do is swap it to a city that already has a flood barrier and it's protected. And then if I swap it back, it's uh, it's basically defended forever. Cute little exploits that you can do. Oh man, I really want to buy the shipyard in here. Can I get some money off of uh, off of Victoria somehow? I got nothing else to sell her sadly. So, cause I really want to build by this shipyard. I mean, it is eight turns, but this stage of the game, eight turns is a lot when I could be running campus research grants or something. Shipyard done in Kume. Let's get a water park to be able to spread a few extra amenities around. Uh, this is why you should always build a dam on your floodplains that have your critical, your critical industrial zones. Um, God, that's so painful. It is only the factory that died, but still you should always, always, always get your dam. Dams up. Conservation is done. This opens up a lot of movement for us in terms of builders. We can place down forests and lumber mills now. Next up, we're just gonna straight up beeline towards democracy. Communism is also an option, so I might actually hold off on that and just go straight for ideology first. Oh, Jesus Christ, another flood. Ugh, uh, it's a much worse one than the one we had, yes, like the last turn. Oh, sweet Christ. Ah, that sucks, my spy was murdered. It happens, it's part of the RNG, but if you wanna get a high level spy, you gotta risk it. So in Ostia, I don't really have a good way to get power over here. So I'm actually considering for the extra five sites, maybe putting down a pair of solar panels. God, I really hate solar panels, but it might actually be the right move here to get enough power to, um, yeah, I think it might be the right move to be able to get the uh, research lab power to put a pair of those down. Oh, my science is being crippled by the lack of power, actually. That's painful. So now if I were to plug in rationalism, it's only 4.5 science per turn, which is really, really bad. That's really, really bad. So I won't be plugging in rationalism. I would like Trade Confederation if I could get it. I still think Merchant Confederation is carrying me. I really want Vissel Banking plugged in. Oh, this must have been played on the old patch because I have a different setup from how I should. The game is telling me, yeah, this definitely must have been played on the old patch because my government hasn't updated it properly. Um, I should have two diplomatic cards here, which is why I keep thinking I should be able to plug in Vissel Banking and then I'd have to lose uh, Invention. That's what, that's what has me a little bit confused here. Um, so I'm just going to lose invention and plug in Vissel Banking because that's where 12 food and 12 production in my capital. Which again, in a city with this much housing and this much production getting multiplied, that's like insane. That's because it improves your trade routes to your allies. So super valuable. If you have an ally, take advantage of Vissel Banking. First archaeologist is up. Culture is going to start going up a bit now. Question is, do we go for seaport or do we start hard work on those campus research grants? Scientifically, Lao Taro has already launched the moon, uh, is already launching the moon landing. So that's going to be a rough one. We're a bit behind and we still have repairs to do. So I think now we're just into raw science mode. We just have to work as many of these campus research grants as possible and forget about basically everything else. At least in the city of Ostia, right? We just it has to happen. Talk to Eleanor, see if we can get another two great works of writing off of her for a good price. 
boom very nice got all the great works of writing that we can fit in this government and that's netting us 16 culture per turn we're almost over 100 culture per turn which is a bit of an achievement for this game looks like we got silver rewards for the world's fair which is cool 50 diplo favor and two civic boosts i'll accept those now in a city like Putioli, it could be worth it to do industrial zone logistics in here to try to secure one of the late game great engineers, especially because we'll get five science per turn from powering this city using industrial zone logistics. So I think that's what we'll do in here. But most of my other cities, it's probably better off doing campus research grants. You want to do a little bit of each because this is also worth, it used to be worth gold if I remember correctly, but you want, you want to do a little mixture. Basically what I'm trying to say. We got our industrial zone back up in the capital. So things are powered again. So we're back over 500 sites. We can work on our spaceport now. We got a great admiral as an option. Grants enough envoys to become suzerain at the city state that removes all other players' envoys. Super useful, actually. We're definitely going to make use of him. On who yet? I don't know. Ferris wheels. Another great way to get culture and amenities all together in one little package. That little bit of culture, it will pay off. I promise you. Make sure you're stealing archaeological dig sites from your friends. It's just on untapped culture that we were sitting on right six culture uh, three culture per uh per artifact that's nine culture per archaeological museum that you're missing out on if you don't actually build the archaeologist the archaeologist is the reason you build the archaeological museum boom two solar panels environmentalism boosted and now ostia is powered getting that extra science from its research labs in the city of palmyra because it has the mausoleum and we're most likely going to want to work a lot of these coastal tiles we're going to prioritize getting the seaport i'm actually going to deprioritize production once i have that in order to work as many of these coastal tiles as i can boom Put down a forest and a lumber mill. We've got a one food, five production tile. That's a huge upgrade over that one food, one production tile that was there before. I mean, just look at this. How could we lose this game? Sure enough, Lautaro is ahead in terms of actual research right now, but we're only three techs behind him, but we're making nearly double his science per turn. And we're on two, turn 244. Four. Sure enough, he's ahead, but I'm about to finish my spaceport next turn. Um, I just, I have a hard time believing that I'm going to lose from this position. Boom. Second I finish my uh, spaceport, this is a very risky strategy. It's the single spaceport strategy. Super, super risky. But... It means I can overlap spies, I can use my diplomatic quarter and uh, steam my way through the tech tree. So we actually don't need to finish Mars Colony um, until we're all the way up into here and find Exoplanet. But so now is when I'm going to start my Earth satellite because I'm, I'm getting close now. I'm within the 10 to 20 turns of Mars Colony. So that's when we go. We start launching Earth satellite, then moon landing in quick succession. All right, final decisions for Ravenna. Let's have a look at what this city is doing. It's mostly working land tiles, but it is working quite a few of these tiles. Super hardcore, needs another builder. Honestly, needs two builders, but I am building builders from Caesar Augusta, so I can just get those sent over without without really needing to change too much in here. Now, since I'm working so many of these coastal tiles, it may be worth it for me to pick up seaports here for the uh, plus two gold on all tiles here, especially when my gold is pretty weak here at this stage of the game, and gold is going to be increasingly important the later the game it gets. Oh god, I just spilled water on my fucking brand new keyboard. All right, we're back from the uh, the water spill mistake, and I think this is actually a one game now. We uh, we have top sites. We are on the verge of completing the Earth satellite. He doesn't even have Mars colony researched. And we are just seven turns, uh, composites and nanotechnology. We're just seven turns away from picking that up. The, the only real things that I need to optimize here is um, once this Earth satellite launches, I'll need to make sure that I'm picking up good city-states if there are in fact any city-states left on the map. Out of all the city-states I see right here, I could use this Great Admiral to get suzerainty of one, but I already have suzerainty of the ones I care about. Right, world enters into the atomic era. The Earth satellite should launch. We see all of the memes and we meet all of the players. Now we just get to work on the moon landing. Nine turns from now. Yeah, somebody built the mausoleum this game. It was in fact me. So if more of the uh, great engineers pop up, we'll be able to get good use out of them. In terms of golden age stuff, I feel like heartbeat of steam is pretty good here. We have good adjacency on our campuses, which should result in a ton of production as well as the extra production towards stuff. Otherwise, yeah, I feel like it's the extra production from Heartbeat of Steam. That extra little chunk of production is going to be nice. We might be able to grab Johannesburg or where else could we go? Probably Johannesburg. I'll just go park Magic Perry over there. And I think I'm going to start saving builders near my spaceport. So when I get my th tier three government building, 
I can start feeding in all the uh, the builders in there with the um, I can't remember what it's called but it's the one that lets you use builder charges to speed up your space race projects. Got a seaport in Palmyra so now these coast tiles are incredible. Otherwise I don't have anything else left to build in here. Maybe an entertainment complex to spread some amenities around which I think I already had one placed so we can get that to uh, work here pretty quick. There's Mars Colony. Perfect. Mass Media is almost done. I do need to pick up uh, the nuclear program so I can plug in Science Foundations. So that's going to be a small priority of mine. But um, once the moon landing goes, we'll be able to pick up a ton of civics. Now I got to just start digging into the future era and seeing if we can find where the uh, exoplanet expedition is. All right, so it's the turn before the moon landing. And if you want to optimize your moon landing, it's a good idea to go around. Oh man, forest fire over here. That's painful. I just improved all these tiles. I might, I might sign up another builder to keep improving my tiles and kind of give up one of those builders that I had planned to feed in. But yeah, um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, if you want to optimize your, your moon landing, make sure you're running these campus research grants because you're when you do the moon landing, you get 10 times your science per turn. So if you're running all those science projects, you're getting a little bit of extra science, right? Because if you look in here, uh, I'm getting 4.4 science from campus research grants, which would easily translate it to 44 culture. Boom, there's the moon landing that'll instantly finish Scorched Earth. And we should have enough overflow cultures to take out mobilization ideology and then potentially suffrage or class struggle. Well, it looks like I got hit by a natural disaster. I'm going to add that proposal, see if people will uh, give me gold. And then we can get to work on the Mars colony, which I will remind you that Lautaro has not begun. So from this point on, I can declare this a win. Um, there's very few ways I can lose this game. Maybe some catastrophic spaceport stuff, but I am top science and I am ahead on the space race. I'm only one tech behind Lautaro, but I'm making nearly 50 more science per turn than him. And uh, my science is only going to continue to go up. So I think that's an easy declaration of a win. We have nanotechnology done. We have Mars Colony done very quickly. We're going to get Stephanie Qualex soon, who will give us 100% production towards these. So yeah, I really don't see how we lose this game from this point. So I'm going to declare that, you know, a, a save file saved. A uh, very good save file. Um, I like that he gave me sort of a save file from when things were going really, really badly. And he also gave me one from a little bit earlier. So I could be like, okay, here's what went wrong and here's what you should have done and here's why. And so I think the really big mistake that he made was not getting the, you know, the flood barriers up and really, really focusing in on getting a single spaceport up and then defending it with two spies, using the extra culture from the moon landing to feed into your tier three government and then pick up the tier three government building. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, it's like Royal Society or something that allows you to feed builders into projects. And um, there we go, we're just, we're done. We're basically done. Um, it would be a matter of like 30 turns before I win, but that seems like an awful lot of time for a save file that I've already invested a ton of time into. But yeah, I'm gonna declare this one won and saved. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.